All right, so I want to show you this new Perlin noise setup. It's based off of the old video. If you haven't seen the old ones or the original ones, uh, there's a couple videos leading up to this where we start dealing with uh, terrain generation, uh, procedural terrain generation. Then we add uh, with Perlin noise for the hills, and then we start adding dynamic slope so we can control how that operates and looks. And now we've got multiple sets of slopes, multiple sets of interfering Perlin noise structures or noise uh, algorithms. So let's see how that works. So Perlin stretch, now check this out. I have, this is a piece of terrain and it's dynamically doing this. It's smoothly operating this and this can happen in real time in the game. It doesn't have to be an editor tool. All right, so we wanna see, I wanna show exactly how to generate this type of effect. Now that's just one of them. If I take the other Perlin slope or the other Perlin stretch, you can see that we have this, a smooth one and a more rigid one uh, where it has steep cliffs and drop-offs and we're moving from one set to another. Now, this right now has a very short drop. Everything is a very sharp drop off here with heavy cliffs when we're going between one to another. So that's an area where we can take our Perlin slope and change it to this. And we suddenly have this smooth transition from one to the other. So we actually see them less and less or affecting each other more and more. So we end up having uh, this spot right here effectively coming down to almost no terrain jump. All right, of course we can also make it much sharper. So we add a couple keys here and I'm gonna break them. So broken and broken. And I'm gonna bring this one down to here and I basically want it to be primarily one slope and then jump dynamically into the next one. And the big reason I want to show this is just to basically emphasize the capabilities here, what you could do with this. So there. All right, so now when I'm looking at the terrain, it does have a smooth transition from one slope to another, but we're gonna see that still strong separation of one section to another. All right, so we can create some really interesting terrains here and get all sorts of different designs, uh, especially interesting when you start bringing in the extra lines here for different types of things and you start doing overlaps. So let's see, right about there, and we'll add another one here, drag it up and another one here, give myself there okay and we end up with something really interesting whatever it is maybe this is a golf course or a skate park but it's dynamically generated and it's whatever shape we effectively want to generate we can go with very large shapes so there's not as much difference and changes in the terrain as it happens. Okay, now let's go into the code. How does this happen? Um, if you haven't seen the first videos, there's a link in the description to the first uh, to the to the previous one uh, where we talk about Perlin slopes, uh, uh, per, the combination of Perlin noise and slopes when creating terrain. Now we've got multiple, so let's see how the code changed. Effectively, all that I have now is before we just had one Perlin stretch, Okay, now we have three. So we have the two key hills that we wanted, the two Perlin slopes to define how the side of a mountain would look. And then we have two height multipliers, how high each one of those Perlin noises can get in the terrain. And then finally for the animation curve, we have our two key slopes, what that looks like. But then this third one is how it chooses to go between one or the other slope one or slope two which one is it going to be relying on and how much this is something that could that could be a gradient curve or it could be a, a snap from one to the next so traveling down in the code the most of this code is all covered in the previous video but the previous video effectively all we had was something similar to just one line about like this and it would set the mesh with it so now we've added a few more steps first off 
we're getting flux 0 and flux 1. Those variables are basically what's allowing us to choose how much of the Perlin 1 slope should we use and how much of the Perlin 2 slope should we use. Um, so since this is giving back a value, it's giving a percentage, somewhere between 0 and 1. So effectively, we're using Perlin noise to get what that fluctuation difference is going to be. Uh, once we've got it, then we just get the other fluctuation, flux 1, and we basically just subtract flux 0 from 1. And so we get, if 1 is 40%, the other is 60%. If 1 is 10, the other is 90%. So that's, that's how we decide which, how the key values are. Next, we get our two Perlin slopes. We evaluate both of them. I suppose I could put something in there that if something was absolutely 0 on uh, the flux, absolutely one or zero that not even don't even bother processing it but honestly Perlin noise is very quick and there are faster ones than what unity provides um, but it's this is still very effective and very quick okay so we do the exact this is the Perlin noise function that we had before this is literally the Perlin noise function we had except it was mesh xy equals this Okay, but now we've got a second one, Perlin 2, with Perlin slope 2, and Perlin stretch 2, and per, uh, height multiplier 2. So we're basically just generating two of them, and now what we're doing is we're taking Perlin 1, multiplying it by flex 0. Maybe I should have called it flex 1 instead, flex 1 and 2, so it matches the Perlin 1 and 2. But anyway, we have Perlin 1 times flux 0. So if flux 0 is 40%, then whatever that slope was from Perlin 1, we get 40% of it. And then same thing, Perlin 2, we do the same thing again, but against flux 1 instead of flux 0. So now we get 60% of whatever spot we're at is going to be whatever the Perlin 2 slope was for that point. It's very easy to manipulate this and if you follow the series this hopefully will be a relatively straightforward edition of how this works and the chaotic interesting things you can get from this so i suppose i'm just going to end the video with messing around with some different patterns for this so let's see i'm going to try to bring these up into here there's that where we have a smooth terrain from one to the other smooth terrain from one to the other and smooth terrain so we end up with this bumpy texture you can see the different wave patterns rippling across so we have something much more aggressive along with uh, something else in here and now we can bring up the height of one but since they are gradually shaped together you can't really tell the height of one versus the other except for the fact it's different slopes that are rising here or different points so it's always more interesting to have these different shapes, especially some with these cutoffs. Now this version of Unity also has a bug in it. Um, I just figured I'd add that. That uh, once we have this, once we have set one of these values with a drop off like this, um, it is really tough to get out of it. Like right now, I can still manipulate it and reset it back to a some kind of slope, some kind of gradient curve that happens. Um, but let me lock that in place, and then I'm going to adjust something else on this. So we still see those slope, those really sharp cuts in here, but now I'm going to click back on this and try to remove it. Ooh, that one actually worked this time. Okay, like 50% of the time that I've been doing this, I cannot end up getting that to work. Half of the time, once I've got this locked in place, it doesn't let me manipulate it or get rid of it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, that one. I cannot get this side out of that. Oh, that was it. I, I can. I just have to use both of it. Oh, you couldn't see that. That sucks. Okay. Oh, and you can see this one has a sharp dip from one side to another where, you're in, where we're using a broken one. Uh, that allows for some pieces in here where we see this sharp kind of pop contrast from one terrain set to another. Uh, we'll probably see that somewhere else in here if we look around. Uh, a little bit like right there, swoosh to another. Um, I tend to find the most interesting sets. Oh, yeah. So when I'm moving one set here... Oh, sorry one set you can see that I'm all moving but I really like this 
if I have this heavy cutoff between one to another, uh, go by this mode and then like this. So we're about edit key, we'll say we are at 0.5 and one. Okay, so basically this is a perfect cutoff. In fact, I'm gonna save that. There's, there's a hint if you haven't used this. Use the construction wheel, expand it out, and you can save it. You can also right click, delete, and replace, move it first, etc. Okay, so because I have that perfect cutoff, it allows me to very dynamically see one choice over another. So we can see the Perlin noise effect here. So one set of terrain is staying still. The other one is the one that's moving. In fact, I'm going to drop the height of number two, uh, and that should make it stand out even more. It's almost like this bottom one is water waving around in between here. Not quite. Okay, and then the fluctuation of how we choose one from the other. You can see that as the patterns come in, they're rolling over a constant shape of how that hill is supposed to be, but we're dynamically cutting between one to the other. Now, additionally, we can take this value and just expand it or decrease it so we have a very sharp cutoff from one to the next. Um, and I could choose to make it primarily here, and then we have holes in the ground, or here. Well, and you can also use this for whatever setup you want to kind of take a terrain. Picture this. You have two different sets of terrains, each stored to a mesh value, and then you gradually slide the curve from one to the next, and the whole terrain in front of you melts in some way over to another terrain. Now, this is also a very heavy, sharp terrain, so let's see if I can move that. Um, it might work better if this is broken. Uh, let's go broken. Add one more. And I'm going to break that one too. Bro oh, it's broken. Good. I want to set that fairly flat. And I'm going to move it down here to end this one. We're going to flatten it and move it up here. So this is going to create a smoother contrast from one to the next as we shape from one set into the other. Uh, it means that when it's converting from one landmass to the other, that idea of uh, an, all your terrain melting into something else, um, that is now going to show, it's going to do it in a smoother manner because it's happening like this. Now, that also works better if we're over here at zero for this. Until eventually we've just got one set of terrain or we gradually move across, it melts between the two until we're about 50-50 on both. Then we take the bottom one and drag that one over until we've effectively gone morphed from one terrain into the other. Now, technically, it isn't really a morph. I guess, actually, it is. Yeah, it's a morph. Okay. Anyway, that's the kind of, you can play with all sorts of stuff on this and it gets kind of addictingly fun. Okay, I hope you end up enjoying this. Um, if you have other tips and interesting tricks you want to add for things you can do with the terrain and fluctuate with this, please feel free to comment on this and share out other videos. This is, this is a lot of fun to do. All right, I'll talk to you later.